So today we're going over the proper use of a bandsaw. This is a handheld bandsaw. We use this in our field for cutting conduit, cutting strut, um, things of that nature. Obviously it is a metal blade cutting through metal, so you always want to have the proper PPE of gloves, eyeglasses. Um, safety glasses are a big, big thing when cutting through metal. Um, you have shards of metal coming off the, the surface of what you're cutting, and it's really easy to get a little shard in your eye and it can be a big deal so you always want to have eye protection and hand protection um, just a couple things on band saws come in many different shapes and sizes uh, most of the ones that we use do have a safety feature on them so I can't actually accidentally hit the trigger you have to hit the safety and then you can go so one thing to note when working with a bandsaw, you're not putting any pressure down on the blade. I'm not having to actually push through the metal to cut. The bandsaw is pretty heavy. You're literally just supporting it straight and letting the bandsaw weight go through. If you put too much pressure, you can cause the blade to actually come off the bandsaw or break. So it's very little. It's just pretty much holding the bandsaw up and letting it kind of drop as it cuts. Let's go over a couple areas on the bandsaw. Obviously, you have the blade. Um, bandsaws come in different shapes and sizes and different shapes and sizes of blades. Uh, certain blades are meant for certain materials, so make sure whatever you're cutting through, you have the proper blade. You obviously have the guard going all the way around. You always want to inspect that. Make sure you don't have any big cracks or breaks in the guard. It should be well intact. You have this metal piece here. This is kind of where, as you're cutting, the blade is moving this way and it's dragging whatever material you're cutting into this piece. So this is kind of your back plate. Whatever you're cutting through kind of rests against this and it keeps it from moving on you. You then have your safety, which is usually right up here by the handle. It's a spring-loaded button. Um, so usually you can kind of, you're able to, once you're ready to go, you can impress it with your thumb and then start your drill. If it's not impressed, nothing will happen. You got a handle here for, you know, two-handed operation. If you do have, you know, a situation where your strut or pipe is in a vise and you don't have to put pressure in here, then you can hold the, the handle and really make sure you have a good straight cut. And that's about it on the bandsaw. So the general setup whenever cutting something with a bandsaw, whether it be a pipe or strut, is you really want to make sure, um, you know, wherever you are in the field, that you have it set up and supported by something so that you are not doing the supporting. I don't want to be holding a piece of strut freehand and trying to cut with my other hand. It's just not safe because things are moving around and it's not predictable. So in some cases, say I'm in the field and I don't have you know, ideally a vise or something like that. You can kind of make your own little supports. In this case, I can put a couple other pieces of strut down to kind of have a base, get the strut off the ground, and I can just put a single hand here and the pressure over here is not gonna move anything. So that's what I've done in this case. I'm gonna mark it out. I mark out where I need to cut, make sure I have a firm grip and my hand is gonna be, you know, far away from the cutting point. I don't want, my hand sitting here um, where there's a potential to slip. So, you know, I keep my hand a good foot away from where I'm cutting. And then once I get the bandsaw going, obviously it's going in circular motion and it's going to want to take whatever I'm cutting and move it to this back plate. Um, you don't want to start the cut up front because then the bandsaw is going to kind of move on you. You pretty much just want to put the back plate right up to the material you're trying to cut, and then you can slowly pull the trigger. Once I'm done cutting, I'm all good. I can deburr and do the install. 